you very much. Many, many thanks. You know, I've been an actor all of my life. In fact, I have no conscious memory of ever not being an actor. I couldn't identify it as such when I was a child until I started going to the movies where gradually it began to dawn on me that I was like those people up on the screen. It was an extraordinary realization. And I knew even then that I would never be happy unless I pursued that wondrous mystery that possessed me and which gave me a possession of myself. So in a sense, my chosen profession was a foregone conclusion. But while acting is what I do for a living, activism is what I do to stay alive. And I'm often asked, <laughs> I'm often asked how I came to unite the two. But the answer is I don't have a clue because it was far less a conscious effort than it was a natural progression. Of course, if you grew up in a very large, poor immigrant family, chances are you're either Irish Catholic or Hispanic, and I was lucky enough to be both. So I have a, a head start when it comes to social justice activism. Both of my parents were immigrants. My father was Francisco Estevez, born on July 2nd, 1898, in a little village near Vigo in northern Spain. He was born just a few weeks before the United States declared war on Spain. My mother was Mary Ann Phelan from Borisacane County, Tipperary, born May 22, 1903. They met in Dayton, Ohio. They were married in 1927. <laughs> Some Buckeyes here, right? <laughs> they had 12 pregnancies, 10 survived, nine boys and one girl. I was their seventh son, and my real name is Ramon. <laughs> Each time someone stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, they send forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and injustice. Those words were spoken at the University of Cape Town, South Africa in 1966 by Senator Robert Francis Kennedy. They are inscribed on his memorial at Arlington National Cemetery as well. And they have been a source of inspiration and nourishment for my generation ever since. You know, the, wor the more the world changes, the more it remains the same, I believe, because the three most important needs of every human being on Earth are not only food, clothing, and shelter, but equally the need for justice, healing, and mercy. Without the latter, the former are useless. It is the gross inequality of food, clothing, and shelter that divides us, but it is the absolute necessity for healing, mercy, and justice that unites us. You know, the world is a far, far different place than when I came to it in 1940. There are infinitely more people with a far less certain future. It is a world gone mad from self-inflicted wounds of poverty, greed, environmental disaster, continuous wars, and endless violence. And your generation deserves a sincere and profound apology from my generation for such a pitiful inheritance. There's no excuse for our dismal failure but you were left to accept the cup as offered, not altered. And yet, by your presence here today, you are not typical or average young people who generally see things as they are and ask why. You are dreaming things that never were and saying, why not? Now, no one can ever really tell you any fundamental truth that you don't already know instinctively, but the challenge lies in accepting the responsibility of knowing. So whether we choose to acknowledge it or not, we are all responsible for each other and the world, which is exactly the way it is, because consciously or unconsciously, we have made it so. And while none of us made any of the rules that govern the universe, we do make all the rules that govern our own hearts and minds, and we are all, all of us, 
very fortunate beneficiaries of the countless heroic strangers who have gone before us over the centuries and assure us that the world is still a wonderful and safe place despite our fears. And we're not asked to do great things. We're asked to do all things with greater care. Such an ideal is rare in a culture of so many compromised values and so much cynicism. A culture that all too often knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And yet there remains a very real and mysterious yearning deep within each and every human being on earth that compels us to reach outside of ourselves and serve others for our own sake. Rest assured this yearning is a manifestation of our true selves and leads us to the very first small conscious acts of personal heroism, like confronting and overcoming peer pressure, which often brings rejection from the crowd and satisfaction from the heart. This yearning can be very costly as well. If it were not so, we'd be left to question its value. But this above all, one heart with courage is a majority. Over the long history of the human race, every truth began as a blasphemy, and no one has ever made a contribution of any real worth without self-sacrifice, personal suffering, and sometimes even death. The Irish tell a story of a man who arrives at the gates of heaven and asks to be let in. St. Peter says, of course, just show us your scars. The man says, I have no scars. St. Peter says, what a pity. Was there nothing worth fighting for? My fondest wish for each and every one of you here this morning is that you will find something in your lives worth fighting for. Because when you do, you will have found a way to unite the will of the spirit with the work of the flesh. And all of humanity will have discovered fire for the second time. <laughs> then, dear young friends, may the light and heat from that fire sustain our purpose and make every thought, every word, and every deed a reflection of our personal commitment to help heal a broken world wherever we may find it, so that in the end we may be made worthy of the long-promised blessing reserved for those who show mercy, and we can help lift up people everywhere to that place where the heart is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come forth from the depths of truth and tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, my father, let us all awake. Thank you.